Today, what we're gonna be doing, Universe Sandbox. If you, someone in chat, do exclamation mark form, and it will pull up the link and everyone can submit a suggestion for us to do today. Our first suggestion today is going to be make two black holes orbit each other half the mass of the sun in the middle of the solar system. So we're going to make two black holes in the middle of the solar system, each with half the mass of the sun. So theoretically, all the planets should not get out of orbit. And then we're going to collide them at the end. It's going to be hard to position it. I'm going to delete the sun. Let's put a one solar mass black hole. I need to like make sure it's right in the same spot that the sun was. So I think like right here, right? Oh, wait, 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 wait. I have a better idea. Reset this. Let's, we can replace the sun. So it's actually in the same spot. Look, you go actions, replace object with black hole one solar mass. So just this, if you look, the planets aren't going to be affected, at least gravitationally. So now I think if I just half the mass of this, like, one half and then i put another black hole this should work right slow down time i want to see if they orbit each other okay okay look at that binary system they're going so fast though okay wait did it absorb it oh wait okay they absorbed each other <laughs> i gotta i gotta redo that because it just absorbed the other one i think i put them too close okay this is 0.5 solar mass also this is about real time. Look how fast they're moving. And theoretically, the planet should be fine. The combined mass should be one solar mass now, split into two black holes. So all of the planets should stay perfectly in orbit like normal. For some reason, we can't run the simulation faster than one hour a second. I think the black holes are just moving so quick that we can't really see because three hours a second isn't really going to show us orbits interesting okay um that was cool now we collide them here's what we're gonna do slow down time so they're like moving pretty slow and i'm just gonna zero the velocity on one of them and see what happens this is slower than real time and you can still see them moving that's how fast they're moving i think that's why the game won't let us time warp super fast because they're moving so quick zero the velocity so on this one, this one's now not moving at all. So they should get sucked into each other. Okay, this just ruined their orbits. Um, maybe try it again. Zero velocity. Oh, okay. So they collide and then they just become one solar mass. And then is it still moving? Because if it is, it's going to drag the planets with it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, the black hole is now moving really quick. So I think it's going to pull the planets a little bit, but it might be moving so fast that the planets just like get launched into space. Yeah, so the planets are just all dead now because the black hole got shot out and that was the only thing holding the system together. So goodbye, Earth. You will now freeze. Chipster, you saved the polar bears. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to help global warming here. The polar ice caps are not melting anymore. Do not worry. I fixed it. You still hate Pluto with a passion. I've always hated Pluto with a passion. Can you see what I'm wearing, dude? Look at the back. Look what it says. Pluto hate club. This is available. You can buy this. Spaceshipyt.com. Let's pick a new suggestion, everyone. Make Earth's orbit very elliptical. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Give it like an orbit that goes in really far, but also kind of goes out really far. Yeah, okay. Let's see if we turn on orbit lines. Yeah, okay, okay. So now Earth is gonna go between, like closer than Mercury by a lot, and it's gonna go all the way out past where Mars goes. So let's see what happens here. So one year is gonna have a lot of climate change now. We're gonna go from global warming to global fire. <laughs> the whole thing's gonna burn. Let's watch the temperature as this happens. Average temperature on Earth right now is 7 Celsius. Let's see what happens as it gets closer to the sun. You can see it rise. This looks like it's probably the closest point. Average temperature is 21 Celsius. We're looking like it's pretty hot still. Like, like the oceans are 41 Celsius on the equator. So yeah, it's definitely getting pretty hot. Let's check the life likelihood. Okay, it dropped to 81%. Usually it's like 95. So that would definitely cause a mass extinction event. Earth is still, wait, Earth is still not as hot as Chip Mewing. Okay, dude. Let's see what happens as we cool down now. So that was the closest point. So mass extinction event killing probably the majority of species on the planet. 
Let's see what happens now. It's still heating up, actually, like a lot. The average temperature is now 40. Let's see how much it cools down out here. The problem is I think Earth is really good at holding heat because you can see it is cooling down, but it is not cooling down nearly as fast as it was heating up. So as the years would go by, it would just gain more and more because the average started at seven and it's going to start heating up again once it gets over here. So every year it gets hotter and hotter, 50. 60 almost. Yeah, 60 something. Almost 70. So it's slowly overall heating up and you're going to see the life likelihood get lower and lower. 60 something. It looks like it's kind of stabilizing around 60 to 70. Oh, okay. Okay. After a while, you can set 4%. Dude, 126 average. And look, the entire ocean has been melted away. <laughs> Dude. Okay. So yeah, Earth, Earth would not like a highly elliptical orbit because it seems like it's really good at holding in heat because of, I guess, our atmosphere. So when it gets really close to the sun, it's going to absorb a lot of the heat and getting further away, it will drop some of it, but not enough. And I would say everything on Earth died. Maybe some small like bacteria survived, but there's no way it's going to be able to evolve back into anything on a planet like this. Not I would live. Maybe, maybe you could maybe survive a couple years. Let's turn the sun into Ton 618 and then see how big it is. I want to know the diameter. 390 billion kilometers or 0 0.04 light years. So yeah, it's a lot bigger than the solar system. So if we make the sun into Ton 618, there will be no solar system left. So the first step, we got to turn the sun into a black hole and then we'll, we'll turn the radius up. So the radius will be half of that. So 0 0.02 light years so how we turn it into a black hole we're gonna lock the mass but crush it down dude i just got back i can't have one stream without you guys being normal dude crush the sun down but the mass is staying the same so we're making it smaller but all the mass is still there so we're like crushing it but eventually it should turn into a black hole because the density will be so high how small does it have to be it's only 20 kilometers big now one kilometer okay so about 2.6 kilometers and that will finally turn it into a black hole so now we need to make it 0 0.02 light years in radius that is very big so i'm just gonna slowly make it bigger here is the solar system right now you can see the orbits are getting pulled in because the mass is getting a lot stronger now we're not even close to how big ton 618 is Okay, I think it just absorbed Jupiter and shot a bunch of gas out. It's absorbed pretty much everything in the inner solar system. And there we go. It's pulled out everything. Uh, <laughs> dude, we're not even there yet. It's 0 0.02. Still not there. Zero point. Okay, still not there. Keep going. Keep going. 0 0.02. A little, a little smaller. Okay. This is now the size of Ton 618. So it is way bigger than our solar system. What we can do is put the sun out here and then put the solar system around it if you go add planets. So here's the size of the solar system. And that that's the size compared to Ton 618. Ton 618 black hole is absolutely massive. It's like you can't even comprehend the, the real scale. Make a frozen planet and a lava planet binary with each other. We're going to start with a random rocky. Let's do the let's do the lava planet first. This has an atmosphere on it, dude. So I think the only way it can stay really hot out here is it's going to have to be like Venus, where it's going to have a really thick atmosphere with lots of atmosphere layers. So let's turn this up. What's like the point where it starts glowing like 500 Celsius? Yeah, that's starting to glow. Make the atmosphere greenhouse gases. Yes. What is it made of right now? Atmosphere is argon, sulfur dioxide, water, nitrogen, ammonia. I think we want like methane. There is an entire Earth's atmosphere added to it of just straight up methane. So this should really help with the heating. There's a chance of life, dude. No way anything's living on this. Average temperature is 1000 Celsius. So yeah, you're, this is hot. This is, this is a hot planet. It is still heating up past a thousand. I could live there. <laughs> no, you can't. Let's change the colors. Because I want to have it be kind of darker. Ooh, wait, that kind of looks cool. 
We could give it a different elevation map to change different things about it. Oh, okay. I kind of like that one. And there is a chance of life somehow. Okay, we're going to binary another rocky planet. And I'm actually wondering if the heat radiating off the lava planet will have any effect on the frozen planet. I want it to be frozen with water. So like there's actually ice on it. So let me see the surface. Oh, dude, it's already a water world. Okay, this is perfect. How do we drop the temperature? This is out past Mars, right? Or is it between Earth and Mars? It's between Earth and Mars. So I think if we just like give it a pretty thin atmosphere, it's going to freeze by itself. Oh, yeah, dude, here we go. You're telling me most of the ocean is sulfur dioxide? The ice is made of sulfur dioxide, dude. This isn't even frozen water. What's our temperature? I want to make sure it's not going to melt. These parts are hotter. I wonder if the part facing the lava planet is going to be warmer. OK, I'm going to tidally lock it. OK, so now the same side of the frozen planet is always going to face the lava planet. Switch sulfur dioxide to H2O. OK, I think we can do that, actually, if we go replace all sulfur dioxide with water. Replace. So now it's all water, but we're going to have to freeze it again. Freeze all. It won't freeze. The water is resistant to freezing. I don't know why it won't freeze. What about melt all then freeze all? Vaporize all. <laughs> Bro, it doesn't work. Wait, here, make it negative 100. Okay, there we go. Manually did it. There's our frozen planet and lava planet binary with each other. Oh, okay. What just happened? I wasn't watching. Someone clip it. How did this happen? I'll have to wait for the YouTube video. If you're watching on YouTube, by the way, you should subscribe and like the video. I honestly don't know what happened. Let's keep playing it, though, and see what continues to happen. Okay, so they absorbed into each other. Now it's like vibrating. Okay, at this point, the lava planet and the frozen planet are about the same size. And then it starts growing. Look, the liter the frozen planet literally just starts growing. I, I don't know. I don't know, man. Expansion of gases, is it? It just started growing and then pulled in the other planet. The expansion of gases wouldn't change the mass, though. It just grew by itself, defied the laws of physics, and went to 25 Earth masses. Now we're going to go to a new suggestion now. Make every planet orbit Jupiter. Okay, that's kind of interesting. I wonder if they would. Jupiter has, like, by far the most mass, so I think it might work. Maybe we start with the bigger planets. Is this going to orbit or is it going to be like binary is my question. Because like Saturn is the next biggest, right? Okay, let's see if Saturn orbits. Okay, they're sort of binary. You can see their orbits are pulling each other. So it's going to be hard to put other planets out here. Maybe we go really wide with the rest of the planets. Uranus Bye, is just gone. Okay, delete Saturn. Let's start smaller. Mercury, we know will work. Venus should work pretty easily. Earth should also work pretty easily. The inner solar system was never the issue. We all knew that this would work. The problem is when we get to Saturn. What if we go really far out with the orbit? It looks like it's decently stable. I mean, as stable as you can really get here. So let's just throw the rest of them in and we gotta go pretty far so that Saturn's doesn't pull on these planets. Okay, that is every planet orbiting Jupiter now. Let's see what happens. Let's see if it's stable. Okay, well already, okay, no, it's not. <laughs> the gas giants are way too big. They're all kind of flying around each other. This kind of looks cool though. <laughs> the inner ones are very stable though. Mercury, Venus, where'd Earth go? Wait, is Earth just gone? Something ate Earth? Yeah, Earth is not here. Oh wait, it's right here. Make a berry center chip. <laughs> Make a bear center. I mean, okay, we'll try one more one more try to see if it's possible And I'll do a bear center between Jupiter and Saturn because those are the biggest two so Jupiter and then we'll put a bear center between that and Saturn and then if we try to orbit the next planets around This maybe let's just try it. Let's just put them all in so I don't think it works in order but we'll try this order. So Mars, and then we already have Jupiter and Saturn. So we'll go Uranus, Neptune, all the way out here. Let's see if this works. This looks kind of like it's working. Wait, this actually looks sick. We'll give it more time. Wait, this might actually be working, dude. Oh, never mind. There goes Earth again. 
Why is Earth always the one that gets picked on here? <laughs> and it will freeze to death. Actually, it's going to be in its own orbit. It might actually... I mean, it's further out. It would have froze no matter what, because Jupiter's further out. Okay, it doesn't work. It's really hard to get it to work. We cannot get them to stabilize around Jupiter. I think if we didn't have Saturn, the sun is the problem. You really think so? What, you think if there was no sun, it would work? It will work, remove the sun. Okay, we're just doing it with Jupiter in the center of the system. That's what you mean? And then what? Binary, should we... Are we binarying Saturn or orbit? Your choice. Okay, we'll binary it. I don't think it'll work. I mean, they're moving less. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Uranus. Okay, let's see if that works. No, see, it's still unstable. Like over time, the orbits are going to get thrown out. Like this is more stable, but yeah, see, there you go. Things get launched out again. I don't think it works. Collide Jupiter and Saturn, including their rings and moons. That might be cool because then you get to see all of the rings and their moons, like how they interact on the collision. So here's Jupiter and then Jupiter, we want to give its moons, which it has like 90 something moons. So yeah, that's a lot. And we want to give it its rings. Okay, there it goes with its rings too. And then I'm going to go all the way out here, like maybe like this launch saturn whole system yeah at jupiter all right this is already starting to lag a little bit but we also want the ring saturn's ring okay let's see what happens here all of the moons are going to be affected by this so far not too much the rings are still holding together i wonder if the rings will start to deform before they hit because of jupiter's gravity Oh, okay, okay, that was a little quick, but it looks like the ring stayed stable all the way up to the collision. So that was the collision, Jupiter absorbs it. Um, what is this? It is now spawning new planets. What is happening, <laughs> dude? <laughs> it is, is giving birth to new planets and the rings are now going all around it. This kind of looks cool though. And let's see what happens over time. All of Saturn's moons got captured. I think a couple of them collided. I think it was giving mass to some of the moons. And then Jupiter's gravity strong enough to probably hold in all of these moons. Maybe a couple of them escape. Yeah, it looks like a, some of them do. And a lot of Saturn's rings particles look like escape too. Probably just because of their velocity they had going in. But then it looks like it kind of stabilizes with this weird ring formation. But yeah, it looks like, I guess, I mean, Jupiter won, but obviously Jupiter's gonna win. Oh yeah, we were gonna send Ton618 into the Milky Way. Let's try that. Here's the Milky Way. The entirety of the Milky Way right here. Now we're going to launch. Do I have Ton618 saved? I have Phoenix A, which is close enough, right? Let's throw Phoenix A into it. Here's Phoenix A, which has a diameter of 0 0.0282 light years. So this is slightly bigger than Ton618. Let's see what happens. We gotta go years. We gotta go like millions of years a second to even see any motion here. Okay, here comes Phoenix A into the Milky Way. I think it'll just like spew the galaxy everywhere. Flies in. Oh, okay. Everything lit up for a second. Did you see that? Oh, and it looks like, okay. It got caught by Sagittarius A star, the central black hole. And then it looks like it does get launched out. And the galaxy is actually mostly fine. I mean, it looks, okay, wait, maybe not. It looks like, oh, it's coming back. And I think it's gone for good. So it disrupted the galaxy a lot, but galaxies have a, so much mass that like it's still being held together. I wonder if Phoenix A will come back after like a trillion years. We can't speed up time enough to really see. So the Milky Way is very resilient and would be fine against Tom 618. And I'm sure we would be fine because space is 99% empty. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you for watching. Tune in on the Twitch to see stuff like this live and subscribe. Goodbye.